um, you know, understanding what your product is, right? And so this this goes to sort of the product feature. You know, you better know your product. The best salespeople know the product back and forth. Um, but it's not just knowing your product. It's knowing who your customer is. And the reality is that, you know, your customer, at least in the early stage, and so I, I have my expertise is probably more in the pre-seed and seed stage. In the beginning, it's actually not about servicing all your, you know, everybody. It's actually usually a very, 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 very narrow customer segment that you're targeting, right? And the more narrow, the better, because you, you actually prefer, you know, my, my preference, I actually think this is just the best practice, is that the way that you get your wedge into the market is actually by targeting the very, very narrow customer segment and making sure they love what you do. It's actually better to have 100 customers that love you than like 1,000 customers that like you, right? And so you're looking for the fanatics in the beginning. All right, let's see if this works. Yes, the next part is actually knowing your channels. Um, and usually it's one or two channels in the beginning, especially as an early stage company, because my take is that, you know, as I said to you, if you know who your customer is, usually the, there are one or two best ways to reach them. Could be LinkedIn, maybe it's telephone, maybe it's email, who knows what it is. Maybe it's Facebook ads. But first, you have to know your customer. Once you know your customers, there's usually a preferred channel that, you know, so the best way to sort of reach them. All right. And so let's let's go through some some live example. This is this is a, a great, great sort of, I guess, framework to sort of think about sales and think about you know sales at sort of every single stage and so in the beginning you know as you think about sort of your idea and you're going through your idea you know this is the idea stage you you really really want to have at least some concept and idea of actually what the pain point is that you're solving um and then sort of like and it's a hypothesis right using sort of scientific methods like this is your hypothesis your hypothesis is Here's sort of like who the customer is. Here's what what we think like their pain point is, a problem we're trying to solve for them. Um, and you sort of have, you use this to sort of build some type of prototype, right? And let's go to the next one. And you sort of like, as you built your, your beta product, you know, like you're trying to figure out sort of the right group of product features that you actually want to build into your product. Um, once you sort of have that, um, you know, the next thing is just like, and so bigger as part of your beta, do you have the right features, right? And the right feature set for your customers. Once you've actually launched it, you know, and getting your first customer, and sometimes you might have to give away for free, depending on situation, depending on the product, you know, how much you should be charging for it, right? Because you actually want to sort of like engender usage because you're going to learn a lot. A lot of this is all sort of like the education sort of process for yourself of learning who your customers are, learning what they like, learning what they don't like, and learning have you sort of like built the right things for them. Um, and then sort of like once you figure that piece out, like how do you actually get this out to as many different people as you possibly can, right? So scaling it. Um, and so that's that's really, really important. You know, one of the first things I say is like, you know, before you, you know, especially for technical founders, is like, look, if you if you aren't prepared to go and sell your own product that you're, that you're building, even though you're not, you, you, you don't think that you're the best salesperson, you know, you actually have to be the first salesperson. Before you even hire any salespeople, this is not anything that you can outsource. You have to do it yourself, right? And the reason that you actually want to do this yourself is, is you learn a lot of stuff along the way. Right. One of the one of the key elements of actually sales is actually education. You're educating yourself on who the customer is. You're educating yourself in actually getting live feedback. And that's not something you can actually outsource. And so one of the things is the first, you know, as your first customer, you know, your first customer may not be the long term customer, but this is really, really critical. And, and what I would say is in the beginning, you know, the first one, the first 10 customers, you actually almost want to over service them. Right. And, and that's an edge that you actually have as a startup. And actually, as a startup founder, you know, when you're first servicing the first couple of customers, you're very different than, say, a lot of your bigger and much more highly funded funded sort of like companies. Like you have advantage and disadvantages. One of the advantages you can over service them, and as a CEO, you know, like think about like the the feedback that you're actually getting as a CEO being in the market, but also from the customer perspective of being serviced and having your calls answered by the CEO is a huge thing, right? Just like you're signaling how important the customer is to them, and and that is something that is just very hard to replicate, you know, larger sort of like competitors.